Hi there, this is Darren Docterman, producer of Trek Enhanced, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to this commentary for the effects only reel for the Doomsday Machine. This uh, project has been going uh, for several years, uh, probably since even way back in 1994 uh, when I was working on the pilot for Voyager. Um, my friend here, Dylan Eugene Del Gershio, uh, was a roommate of mine between 1991 and 95. I met him at USC, and uh, he was a huge Star Trek fan, and uh, we were buddies, and uh, he passed away a couple years ago. And it's a shame, because I think he would have really enjoyed what's going on. Now we have, uh, we're in the episode now. That was the establishing shot of the Enterprise. And this is all done in uh, a program called Lightwave, which is a 3D rendering and modeling program. And uh, I found it's uh, really powerful to uh, get really nice results almost immediately when you start getting a hang of using it. And uh, a lot of people have uh, questioned as to why I didn't go farther with the effects on here. Uh, especially things like the asteroids and uh, and damage on ships. I basically wanted it to look exactly like the original show, but just goosed a little bit. And I took uh, a lot of pains to try and match the lighting and the uh, and the style of effects that they would have done then. Uh, very similar to the approach that we had on Star Trek: The Motion Picture, the director's cut, uh, where I was the uh, visual effects supervisor and uh, we wanted to have our effects shots that were cut in match exactly the style and look of the original movie and uh, I wanted to do that here as well because uh, it was something that uh, I was always impressed with from uh, I saw a version of Rocket Ship XM the uh, 50s sci-fi movie that uh, Dennis Muren and a couple other people had uh, done a special edition of I don't know if it started out as an actual project or they were just doing it as a hobby, but uh, they replaced the visual effects in the original movie with uh, new effects in, I think this was the early 90s maybe or late 80s, and uh, the effects looked exactly like effects that would have been done in that time period, uh, but they were just, they weren't stock footage anymore of a rocket taking off, it, was, it looked exactly like it would have been done. And I thought that was really cool, and uh, that was one of the inspirations for this project. Uh, that uh, to be able to do modern effects and uh, do uh, effects that, if you didn't know the episode really well, you wouldn't be able to tell that they were done uh, here in the 21st century. Now here is the establishing shot of the constellation. It's I think one of my favorite shots in the show. Uh, and I thought uh, that it needed a little goosing because the original was just a, an AMT model hung on a string, just dangling. Well, I don't know if it was on a string, but it sure looked like it was. And uh, I th wanted to keep it almost exactly the same level of damage that was in the original. And I took great pains to not really do more than that because I thought it was uh, good enough for the show and uh, I didn't want to take you out of the moment by just, hey, looking at that great visual effects shot, just making it pretty enough to say, oh, that's cool, but uh, not take you out of the show. The transporter effect uh, needed extremely little modification. I just changed a little of the coloring to make it a little more gold to fit in with uh, later transporter effects in the show, and uh, just a little blurring to ease up the matte lines. This is one of the shots that uh, I did specifically to mimic the style of effects in the original show uh, by doing 2D movement rather than 3D movement. And that was one of the instances. Now we're coming up on the reveal of the planet killer. And uh, I think this is one of the instances where the remastered uh, uh, show got it really right and I was a little off by my staging here. Uh, although I really like that reveal of the machine turning around. I think the way they had it with uh, the Doomsday Machine coming up from behind them and seeing a shot uh, through the nacelles was really good and really well done and uh, nicely thought out. But uh, i got to say, I like my Doomsday Machine better. 
because uh, again, I took strides to make it look almost exactly like the original, but just put it into a 3D world and have it be able to uh, look real from closer up. And uh, trying to mimic that uh, basically cellophane and uh, wire contraption that they came up with in the 60s, which I think really looks totally alien and unlike anything we'd ever seen before, certainly. Um, and something that doesn't look like a ship, doesn't look like a creature, you don't know what it is. And I think that adds to the mystery of the whole thing. And I think that, uh, you know, by making it a big seashell or whatever was uh, done in the remastered, uh, it just doesn't look as uh, alien to me. It looks more concrete, <laughs> literally concrete. Mm, but, uh, I don't know, I like the translucent uh, effect that uh, you got. In looking at uh, pictures of the Doomsday Machine, uh, it really does look like that there was a an inner uh, wire frame skeletal structure. They basically did some rings out of uh, coat hanger wire and and welded that together with some uh, support rods, and then basically covered the inside with tin foil and uh, maybe sprayed that a certain color, and then covered that with uh, you know very heavy cellophane. And, uh, you know, you can s almost see the clear tape on uh, holding it together in a couple of the shots. I, I studied them uh, a lot to try and build mine. Now we're back here to uh, Decker pursuing the machine. And uh, we're coming up on, I think, the first phaser fire. Almost, not quite. I like how my Enterprise looks, I really do. It's uh, partially due to the lighting, partially doing, due to the textures, um, but uh, I think it can really stand up next to uh, the original shots uh, because it's not as, it's really not as detailed as a 3D model is today, but it's just enough to make it look like the original show and it's lit relatively flatly. Uh, but there's still some good shadow areas in it. The uh, the weapon of the Planet Killer uh, is absolutely uh, a harkening back to the weapons in the War of the Worlds, the original uh, movie, because uh, I thought that was always a really cool effect, and uh, I'm sure it was done with an air gun on a sparkler and just. Uh, uh, you know, composited in with the uh, with the Martian war machines, but I thought that was a really cool effect, and I tried to. I thought that would be fitting somehow. Certainly, because a lot of the sound effects from Star Trek, well, not a lot of them, but several sound effects are from War of the Worlds. So uh, the phasers, uh, I wanted to keep very similar to the original. But uh, we still have the interactive light coming from them. And that's another 2D effect that I wanted to uh, convey to keep it in the style of the original. In these view screen shots, I, uh, I grabbed the noise from the first uh, view screen shot when Kirk is turning on the, the Constellation view screen. And I just grabbed that noise and put it over the whole thing. I think it makes it a little more cohesive and shows that there are indeed problems with the Constellation's power source and that he's constantly trying to uh, deal with a ship that isn't working. A little bit of a scale question with this uh, shot of the Enterprise and the, and the Doomsday Machine, but uh, I think it works. It's a, a tough balance between uh, the actual scale of things and making it look good for each shot. 